has given his first presentation yesterday on the topic micro irrigation system concept design and components and today he is making the next presentation on piped irrigation network planning and design over to you sir for the presentation thank you thank you and uh, once again uh, let me welcome all the participants and uh, thank cbip for uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, yesterday we did a discussion on uh, <clears throat> micro irrigation this uh, very very important topic which we are going to discuss today is a pipe distribution network the reason is uh, this is as i mentioned yesterday also this is a uh, revolutionary change in the irrigation sector in the country when uh, our uh, this government insisted that we should where we have almost 90 95% irrigation which is happening Uh, surface irrigation and uh, in a large area canal irrigated area is there uh, through command area development and all now this all area is really untouched with the micro irrigation systems the reason is all the water is being uh, delivered to the farmers through open channel system and uh, that uh, creates a problem for creating some kind of a storage for the farmer and then use of micro irrigation technology for efficient water management now this scenario is been uh, try to uh, change through the pipe distribution network in the in place of canal irrigation network and uh, we will talk about it the benefits and all the issues involved there <clears throat> and uh, that's the reason this uh, any new development uh, is taking place in a canal irrigated area and uh, one of the main reason is a uh, land acquisition and all so here one of the many i have been conducting this kind of training for the many of the states starting from uh, maharashtra madhya pradesh uh, rajasthan uh, and, and uh, many other states through the help of cbip and uh, many of the questions were uh, from the engineers who are working for the state water resources department for by who are engaged in developing dpr and uh, uh, they are facing um, this uh, development of dpr and issues related with the pipe distribution network i would like to mention here that this pipe distribution network guidelines which have been uh, delivered uh, or given by the central water commission and uh, uh, they have constituted a high power committee involving lot of engineers from central water commission and uh, not only from uh, industry but also from research institutions fortunately i was part of the committee which developed this center water commission guidelines and uh, based on that uh, i will be uh, delivering a lecture on design and operation of this uh, pipe distribution network let me share my presentation with you and we will discuss in between and i again request all the participants uh, you can stop me in between or we can discuss in detail after the presentation is over let me ask you if this visible to everybody or not yes sir it is visible thank you uh, no we will start with that this uh, uh, title is pipe distribution network for irrigation in a particularly canal irrigated area where people are using it for uh, now we are shifting from canal uh, based uh, distribution system from reservoir or uh, headworks to the farmers please place and trying to link it with the micro irrigation system now just again reminding you that uh, we are uh, facing a lot of challenge with respect to the uh, overall water scenario in the world we are going to have almost 9 billion people with uh, which required uh, more than 55% more water 80% more energy and 60% more food now this challenge is basically uh, because we, uh, india and china are considered to be the biggest Uh, people country and uh, expectedly by 2030 or 2035 we will be the biggest country in terms of a population so our challenge is biggest that in terms we have very limited quantity of water and uh, we have we will be having a almost uh, uh, 1.5 billion people 
by that time and you need more energy more food and uh, again reiterating what i said yesterday that we are limited by limited water resources land population and with a finite rainfall you just see the water demand scenario if you look at it uh, i showed you in the yesterday also that in a irrigation the total demand will be probably 637 billion cubic meter which will be coming from 51% from the ground water almost 50% uh, will be uh, our domestic demand will come from ground water and our industrial demand is also coming from ground water so we will be facing lot of problem in terms of getting a uh, water for the farmers as well as for uh, drinking purpose and as well as industrial purpose so this is basically a very uh, scary scenario in coming years that uh, if we don't do not use this water efficiently we will be losing lot of uh, uh, and we will be creating lot of stress in our country related to water same way uh, we will be demanding the crop uh, you just see currently we are this year you uh, remember that we will be uh, producing something like more than 300 million tons and uh, by uh, 250 total demand will be around 377 million tons just remember last two years all of the country was suffering from pandemic and uh, everyone was uh, facing crisis in terms of their job the only place where we are comfortable was the agriculture and food grain availability in the country remember we will be distributing we are distributing almost free grain to the tune of something like 80 crore people <clears throat> so you can imagine the because of the good stock or buffer stock in our country that's the reason we are able to uh, cover this whole pandemic in terms of food availability just imagine a scenario probably Uh, which was uh, many of you are from uh, probably younger than me or of my same age remember the time when we were younger young people uh, probably 10 or 15 years old the crisis for the food grain and we were suffering at that just think about it uh, in 2020 or 2021 we did not face this kind of scenario uh, specifically we are comfortable so one of the key reason is we are some, uh, we need to increase our uh, production and use of water and uh, enhance the water productivity that's the only way you people uh, we people can manage our scenarios just see irrigation water demand and uh, that is the kind of demand we will be talking about it currently we are uh, covering a large area under ground water scenario or uh, slowly more and more we are focusing on ground water so we have to look for the efficient use of surface water because the surface water availability is going to be a challenge and if we do not use it efficiently see the uh, efficiency scenario in our country what is happening our conveyance efficiency if uh, we look at the surface uh, irrigation system it's only 40 to 50% in terms of canal irrigated area and when it is 60 to 70% if it is well irrigated area when while if we move from a micro irrigation we will be using almost 100% efficiency in terms of conveyance same way application efficiency is very very low uh, and uh, overall efficiency if you look at the canal irrigated area is uh, ranging from 30 to 35 while in case of when we go for uh, drip or sprinkler we can reach up to 60 to 70% efficiency that's the uh, scenario we need that's that will be the scenario in our country so we have to look for uh, methods or conveyance methods better conveyance method than co open channel and same way water application efficiency if you look the just see yesterday also i showed this slide attainable efficiency even if we use surface irrigation we can reach up to 80 to 90% efficiency if we design properly if we reduce the water loss in terms of a conveyance because we will be losing lot of water in conveyance of water that means open channel lot of water has been lost now what is the current scenario if you look at it currently we are uh, using main canal then you have a head regulator or cross regulator then you have a branch canal then you have a distributary minor and some minor and from there outlets have been taken either from minor or distributary or some minor 
and then you are having a field irrigation channels. Now all this area we are or talking of an open channel system, and you people are much better knowledgeable than me uh, in terms of a management of these canal systems and development of these canal systems. The reason is expansion of these canal system is very very difficult nowadays. <clears throat> the reason is uh, main reason is we are losing a lot of area use uh, using for these canal system. So because of the land acquisition problem, uh, our canal systems are not being expanded. Uh, even if we have a water at head regulator or main canal, we are not able to cover large area because of the land acquisition issue. Now. Uh, just switch over to uh, pipe distribution network. What will happen? We will be having a main line, then branch line, distributary line with a control valves, minor line and some minor line. And then we are providing uh, water to the outlet or to the uh, gated outlet to the uh, farmers. Now this outlet will be having some kind of a pressure because this is going to be a pressurized line and outlet pressure will depend upon the what kind of irrigation method a farmer is going to use either a sprinkler or drip irrigation and then once it is a pressurized system then you are on pipeline distribution network the problem of land acquisition is gone because then you will be hiring a land or taking a rent uh, from the farmers that the pipeline will be buried below their uh, farm farms or land and uh, it will be only a rent need to be paid to them and everyone is happy. We are happy uh, that we need not to uh, bother about the land acquisition issue and farmer is happy he is uh, getting a land rent and as well as he will be providing help you whenever the maintenance is required. So, and some energy costs will be there. So that will be borne by the farmers and they will be very happy once because there will be uh, more water available to them and uh, in timely application, uh, conveyance losses will be minimized or zero almost, and they will be getting water very fast. The transportation time from headworks or a branch line to the outlet takes probably a couple of hours. That will be cut down to probably in a minute because because the whole of the system is a going to be a pressurized system. If you look at the advantages of a pipe distribution network, uh, one of the key or the primary uh, advantage is no land acquisition problem. It is all an underground system. Many of the underground systems are operating in our country in terms of a uh, gas pipeline or oil pipeline, and the farmers are taking a rent and they have been allowing it, uh, agencies who are maintaining it for uh, maintenance and all that. So they will be getting some lease rent sort of thing. No cross drainage and cross masonry structures will be required. So you are saving a lot of land and you are saving land area. So increase in cultural command area or cultivable command area. There will be no obstruction to free drainage. And uh, all these issues are facing uh, problems when you prepare a DPR for open canal system. There will be no damage to irrigation structures during heavy rainfall or flood because uh, there will be all uh, the things will be buried below the ground and they will be not be exposed to the uh, vagary of nature. There will be no conveyance loss. Obviously, I can I did uh, explain to you better water distribution in undulating land because the, one of the key challenge in case of canal irrigated area, because being a gravity fed line, we are bound by the topographic area. So canals cannot go or canal distribution network Uh, is the presentation visible to everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. The presentation is showing. Is it showing? Is it coming? Yes, it's coming. Okay, okay. My system was a little bit changed, so I had a little confusion. Anyway. Uh, so uh, there will be no conveyance loss, better water. Our canal system whatever canal system which is bound by the topographic area because uh, we cannot go beyond a certain topography because all the systems are supplying water under the gravity. 
So in case of gravity, we are limited by the land or the point up to where uh, our water could reach. So that, uh, that limitation is gone in case of pipe distribution network and we can cover large area or water distribution in the undulating land. Now, obviously, we have a faster installation because we need not to uh, install uh, all large canal system or large earthwork will not be required. We need to dig only a channel or a uh, trench and uh, put the pipeline. They will be installing very fast. So overall project efficiency will increase. And one of the key advantage of this, we are able to link modern irrigation such as sprinkler, rain gun system, or drip irrigation system, all micro irrigation system. So our all the farmers who are under canal irrigated area, they are going to get a benefit that they will be able to use all the modern irrigation technology for their farms. Then again, all the advantage of micro irrigation such as fertigation, and then you know the quantification. Currently, it's very difficult to quantify the amount of water which we are supplying to individual farmer. If we are able to apply supply with the, along a water meter, we will be able to quantify the amount of volume of water which the, we can supply to the farmers. There will be no seepage loss in the distribution because uh, uh, we are not uh, doing it open channel and that causes or that reduces or the minimizes the water logging. One of the canal system uh, negative aspect was always being the water logging. Always uh, we were uh, canal irrigated area or the canal people or the irrigation department has been blamed that they are creating water logging or soil salinity and all those things. Then you have a lastly, easier repair and maintenance. Obviously, once the, uh, very easy to uh, and repair these pipelines and once they have been installed and they, their lifeline is very, very long. If you use any plastic good quality pipe, they can last, the life is 50 years. And my own experience, which I can share with you that when I started my job in 86 year, and we installed a pipeline, probably about 2.5 kilometer for getting a water transported from one place, one place uh, in a farm, one place to another. That pipeline is, is still working fine. Unfortunately, due to construction, some JCB broke that pipeline. So that's the reason we took out. And still the pipe has the same kind of shine. So after 35 years of pipe operating, the pipe quality remains same. So actual theoretical life of these pipes are 50 years. So very easily you can use it for many, many generations of these kind of pipe distribution network. Now let's see the kind of irrigation efficiency if we have a canal distribution network or the pipe irrigation network in case of a uh, conveyance efficiency. I explained to you canal-based conveyance. If you have a canal-based con conveyance, uh, and uh, conveyance efficiency will be 70% and drip. If it is uh, surface irrigation, you have uh, 70%. So overall efficiency in case of canal-based con conveyance, you are able to reach up to uh, maximum 48%, even though we are using micro irrigation, or if it is surface irrigation, we are talking of something like 38%. So even if we use micro irrigation in uh, canal area, we are not able to reach to the tune of 56 or 57 percent. Same thing, if we are pipe-based conveyance system and coupled with micro irrigation, we will be able to reach almost in a sprinkler almost 68 percent, while in drip irrigation 82 percent. Overall, uh, in a surface irrigation, even if that we are reaching to 55 percent, so there is a drastic increase of efficiency. Just see 20 percent or uh, almost 15 to 25 percent. See, imagine this kind of additional water is available and additional area can be uh, brought into irrigation. So there will be less gap between the potential and the utilization. So that is a, one of the key aspects everywhere in the all the forum, our irrigation department people been blamed that there's a large gap between the potential and uh, utilization. So that gap will be reduced to a drastic nature and uh, if we integrate pipe distribution network or pipe irrigation network with coupled with micro irrigation. 
there are some uh, disadvantage or limitations of pipe irrigation network obviously there will be initial capital cost because uh, you will be spending lot of amount of money uh, in that and uh, the only problem is uh, but can be uh, compensated that we need not to go for land acquisition if you look at the land acquisition issue then it is even a cheaper option if you go for pipe irrigation network another thing a limitation where we are not going for pressurized irrigation system or a gravity pipe system in that case uh, there is a if water is containing sediments then uh, cleaning of these pipelines becomes a big challenge particularly i've been uh, i've been asked this kind of question by the state water resource authorities or my engineers that those who are installing a gravity fed pipeline where uh, the uh, this sedimentation becomes a issue after few years of operation and then cleaning becomes a big challenge uh, because of you need a, some kind of pressurized uh, system to clean that uh, sedimentation once it is a uh, pressurized system there won't be a much problem as far as uh, uh, sedimentation issue is there now let's come down to the what how we are going to do uh, for uh, and pipe distribution network or a pipe irrigation network what is the issues or first step is the basic information needed for the pipe irrigation network you will be needing a topographical map of the area because of the gravity situ situation or the topographic situation then also you need a subsurface data because of the soil condition what kind of soil we have what kind of uh, if uh, you have some kind of a, a rocks or something like that you need to know texture or soil component of the soil because there we are while we are selecting a quality of pipe or the type of pipe there we need to be careful with respect to the soil uh, quality soil characteristics including the mechanical properties and shear parameters permeability of the soil in relation to seepage loss but most of the times we are cutting down almost zero to the tune of seepage loss we need a rainfall data what is the current scenario or what is the in general uh, historical trend if you have a water availability that means the groundwater situation is what is the situation if groundwater table is very very low or if it is a very deep then it's okay but uh, uh, you need to know what is the scenario with the subsoil water level in the area and the quality of groundwater possibility of water logging and salinization if there is a problem in that area and obviously availability of suitable construction material you have what are the existing drainage or drainage or the infrastructure facilities because while we are putting up pipeline distribution network you have to overcome those local uh, drainage or drainage facilities what is the existing cropping pattern because that is very important because we have to design uh, our pipeline distribution system based on the water requirement of the crops and uh, based on their demand or uh, <clears throat> based on that that we are going to design a pipeline distribution network and pipe sizing and all we will talk about it in coming slides existing communication system and a transportation facilities it's a general uh, requirement wherever you have a construction and socio economic condition or agro economic survey of the project area because that's essential while we are creating water user associations and uh, what is the uh, uh, farmers demand or attitude towards the change and all one of the key component is route selection for pipe irrigation network because that is very very important our main goal is length of the pipeline in the network should be minimal as much as possible we don't want to because the economics is very very important here because the cost of pipes are very critical here and uh, if uh, pumping is avoided if the gravity system is possible by my suggestion is uh, people one should avoid gravity based system because that's a, uh, what i discussed it in limitation that uh, uh, we have a lot of problems of sedimentation if a pipe distribution system is there i at the same time we don't want a higher energy use so you need not to have a high water pressure you need not to run the system to the tune of 5 kg per centimeter square or 5 4 kg per centimeter square we try to reduce the pump set uh, pump size and because the energy cost is another important 
we want to uh, reduce the number of gate wall check wall drain air release wall pressure break wall and that's how the root selection is very very important for the uh, farmer uh, our distribution network while preparing dpr you need to be very very careful that uh, we want to avoid these kind of number of walls so because that creates a lot of loss of energy because once you are pumping you are losing lot of energy important point very low or very high velocity should be avoided we need to uh, careful while designing the pipe diameter and uh, there is standards are already been specified in a guideline we don't want a very low or very high velocity because that causes very low velocity causes sedimentation and high velocity causes maybe uh, corrosion in case of a gravity uh, very low velocity in case of a uh, or a gravity fed pipeline another important point is if horizontal pipe sections are used release of air drain dirt wall uh, all these important points has to be there in case of horizontal ground slope artificial uh, slopes need to be uh, provided so that uh, you need not to have a we we are very need to be careful for the water hammer problem so sufficient air release valve need to be provided in, into the system because once you start the system lot of air is trapped and once you shut down the system lot of air is been backfired or a back hammer is uh, water hammer uh, problem creates and that causes uh, a damage to the pump set system or even a pipeline so your pipeline design need to be very very careful about the providing air release valve sufficient number as well as uh, and you need to be uh, design uh, sufficiently so that the water hammer problem is not there now our uh, next step is the carrying capacity of the pipeline based on the crop water requirement i'm not going to teach here about the crop water requirement but uh, we need to calculate crop water requirement of a planned crop area in a canal or pipeline should be cal uh, calculated using modified panman or uh, even crop water requirement guideline is also available from uh, ministry of water resources center of water commission i suggest i suggest for the new generation of our all engineers should learn for estimating crop water requirement we should use crop watt which is based on penman montier method and it is available in the public domain again uh, the uh, use of that kind of model or is not very complicated because you have the weather data and you need to be uh, uh, using this kind of uh, model for crop water requirement and uh, but teaching for that model will be a separate class we will be keeping some other time but that's very important uh, carrying capacity is calculated basis upon due water entitlement obviously whatever way of uh, water allocation is being practiced in the command area we need to careful and in a cultural command area or pipeline or distributary as per the provisions of the state uh, irrigation department so we need to be uh, careful on that and uh, <clears throat> as per the operational schedule whether it is a weekly or carrying capacity is calculated based on operational schedule of the pipe canal network or distributary so operation on the basis of 12 days or 2 days off in a fortnight is a preferable or as per the requirement again we need to move from supply based system to the demand based system that's the whole idea of pipe distribution network because uh, that way we will be uh, running the system more efficiently and more eff uh, effectively <clears throat> now let's talk about the design standards of the pipeline distribution network we need to be very very careful about the permissible velocity we will talk about in detail in subsequent slides what should be the minimum velocity what should be the permissible head exit pressure at the irrigation outlet for flow irrigation exit pressure for micro irrigation again irrigation method need to be very very clear to all the designers or uh, who are preparing dpr in your command area who is going to use what accordingly you need to design your exit pressure then you comes to the design uh, determination of pipe diameter 
overburdening of the buried pipe, what should be the depth of uh, uh, bury or the depth of uh, laying in the trenches, where the pipe pipes, and because then you need to be careful about the earth load on the buried pipe. Land acquisition is also an activity because here we are not taking the land as such because we are not wasting any inch of land. Only land renting or land leasing is required. You need to be uh, creation of inspection path and very, very important is it is there. You need to design the cross drainage network, pump stand, air vent, vacuum relief walls, drain walls, car walls, working space and trench size, bedding of pipe. We will talk about one by one in subsequent slides. So these are the steps uh, involved uh, for creating those kind of things. Now let's talk about design consideration. Residual exit pressure is required. It, as I told you, the, depending upon the type of irrigation system, what kind of uh, exit pressure is based, uh, used to be for designing the pipeline, for micro irrigation or drip irrigation, we will be requiring one kg per centimeter square or 10 meters of water column. If it is a sprinkler irrigation, we will be talking of 25 meters of water column or 2.5 kg per centimeter square. In case of rain gun in many areas, because some of you are from Narmada area, though who is running a canal system in specifically in Rajasthan, Sanchor, there the, you need to be have exit pressure of 3.5 to 4 kg per centimeter, so a high pressure system. While in case of surface irrigation, you need not to keep very high pressure, that's a less than 0.5 kg per centimeter square. That means it should not be in the form of jet, but at the same time, it should not be a zero pressure so that it's easier to discharge water. Now let's talk of uh, pipe irrigation network procedure or steps. Uh, first step is a map collection. You are collecting the source of supply, network layout, positioning of the hydrant, pumping station, reservoir, and all this uh, information, ground truthing, etc. <clears throat> then you collect the, all the information. Once you have collected all this, so you design the pipe diameter. And uh, uh, in a preliminary studies, you need to be collecting the climate, environmental parameters also, like climatic conditions, pedological condition, water resource condition, and the farmer's condition. And then we have a decision parameters. Based on climate, you are uh, uh, designing the cropping pattern, crop water requirement, what should be the choice of irrigation method, and total, uh, are you looking for 100% satisfaction or the conjunctive use? of surface and groundwater. So you are uh, either fully satisfying this through the uh, canal irrigation or pipe distribution network, complete satisfaction of crop water requirement, all looking for uh, a conjunctive use of uh, surface and groundwater. We need to design the module of the hydrant, number of farmers per hydrant, or what will be the outlet and, uh, and uh, will be there. Area served by each hydrant and what should be the delivery schedule. So once this has been done, then you need to somewhat simulate it and using models and, uh, and then operation and maintenance will be there, like construction, monitoring and data collection, analysis of the system, diagnosis and improvement. So this is the whole picture. You can see the uh, how you are going to design or operate the whole irrigation network. One of the key component of uh, uh, pipe irrigation network is a hydraulic design, which I will spend some time on it and uh, would like to your attention also because that is very, very important. Now, this is the typical uh, Bernoulli's uh, principle that uh, uh, we need to careful on uh, designing the uh, two points at one point and other point, and uh, we will be designing this kind of total energy line or hydraulic gradient line and uh, what is the uh, topographic scenario you need to come up to calculate the head loss because of the uh, because of the friction what will be the velocity loss or what will be the uh, losses because of the elevation so all these points need to be considered while designing at one point to another a, a pipeline design and that will decide our pump size which is very, very important in whole uh, of the irrigation system. So you will be losing some losses because of valves. You will be losing 
some uh, expansion loss or the contraction loss, all these things need to be calculated while design pipeline. First step is once you have decided the total flow in the pipeline and, uh, <clears throat> and in that case, you need to calculate the pipe diameter and which is calculated using simple continuity equation, which is Q is equal to AV, A1, V1, V2, A2, V2, and uh, area, your diameter is equal to the four times Q to the power and divided by pi into V, <clears throat> where Q is the flow in meter cube per second. <clears throat> A is the unknown quantity, which we wanted to know uh, in terms of a diameter. V is the velocity of flow, which is the very, very important uh, parameter to decide. Remember, flow velocity is limited by, in a pressurized pipeline, it is limited by three meter per second. We should always reduce, uh, keep this velocity low to the tune of 2.5 meter per second. We should not go beyond 2.5 meter, although it is upper limit is three meter per second, but I suggest we should always keep 2.5 meter per second. Normal practice velocity is 2.2 to 2.5, in case of a gravity based system, we can take this uh, velocity as 0.7 meter per second. If you put in this, the unknown quantity is diameter. We can get the internal diameter of pipe uh, in meter. Why I always say nominal diameter or internal diameter? Because that's very important. In case of plastic pipe, because we will be talking about the quality of pipe or material of pipe. <clears throat> All the plastic pipe, which are either PVC or HDP, I think so. Many of you are going to use or propose HDP pipe as a pipe distribution network and in a large, uh, many of the Indian project pipe irrigation network, uh, <clears throat> this HDP pipe has been proposed. And these pipes are, I would spend a few minutes here. And these pipes are available from 20 mm to almost 2,500 mm diameter in different pressure class. Now these pressure class are 2.5 kg per centimeter square working pressure, PN 2.5, PN 4, 6, 8, 10, 12.5 or 16. Normally we are going to use probably up to the 10 kg per centimeter square pressure class. And that's the reason uh, these pipes are being given if it is a 20, uh, 110 mm OD, uh, it is an outer diameter. So inner diameter or the internal diameter, which we are getting a calculation, will be only uh, uh, after deducting 3.4 and 4, which is the wall thickness or the average wall thickness is 3.7. So sum of 110 minus 3.4 minus 4, the actual ID will be probably 103 mm only. So once you get the 100 mm internal diameter as a design, so you need to go for a next pressure class or whatever pressure class you need to go for. Accordingly, you will be selecting a pipe diameter. Same is scenario. They have been made IS49841995 or 1985. And uh, they, uh, if it is underground, it's always good to go for HDP pipes. These pipes have been jointed using uh, butt welding process. Uh, butt welding process and uh, Uh, so you need to be uh, uh, careful of uh, designing these kind of things. So <clears throat> while we are using it for PVC or HDP pipe, you can also well, always, there is a strong a steel industry which is available for the pipe distribution network. They will be focusing, but in case of irrigation, my suggestion will be go for plastic pipes. The reason is they are inner to the plastic and uh, Corrosion is minimum, and uh, you also get an advantage in terms of a hydraulic design when you are using a for friction head loss. Now, one of the example is like this. Uh, if you have a discharge of 50 liters per second, then you can have a flow velocity of 2.5 meter per second. You can get a diameter of 159.6. So accordingly, you need to select 180 mm OD for the pressurized flow. And uh, <clears throat> in case of a gravity flow, the diameter will be obviously uh, higher size, 315 mm for the gravity flow. So there is a uh, always been a uh, 
uh, dilemma between the initial capital cost will be very high in case of a gravity flow. Operating cost will be low because there will be no energy involved. But you need to uh, calculate in terms of a benefit cost ratio or which, what would be the best option, whether we should go for gravity flow or pressurized flow. Considering pressurized flow will be having a low maintenance, there will not be any problem of sedimentation and other things. Now, there are different type of pipe materials are available in the, you have a DI pipe, you are cast iron pipe, RCC pipe, then you have a PVC pipe, steel pipes, there are standards available and uh, they are available in different diameters starting from 20 mm to 2500. And same way, we should not go for nowadays, these technologies are quite obsolete, go for RCC pipe or uh, we can go for steel pipe or DI pipe, even cast iron pipe. And these creates a lot of uh, energy loss because of the once after, because of the use in water will, will not be last long and that will be losing a lot of uh, energy and uh, uh, our cost of uh, issues. Now, another important parameter is a determination of a friction and loss in the pipe. We can use hessen william equation or uh, simple, you can use uh, darcy weiss equation. So these are the equations given by uh, guidelines also. You can use these equations or these are more suitable for uh, turbulent flow or where the Renault number is more than 10 to the power 5. You can use... Now here a very important point is the C value, hessen william coefficient. Now this hessen william coefficient is the maximum for all plastic pipes. We should take 150 straight away. And this value does not change with life. While in case of a metallic pipe, if it is old, this value is going to reduce because of the corrosion and all that. Maybe in a new pipe, uh, in only plastic pipes have a, got a value of 150, while rest of the pipes are less than 120, 130 or 140. And uh, as they go old, they will create a problem and more corrosion, so more uh, friction lo head loss so the value getting reduced. So we should go for plastic pipes. Now, a modified hessen william equation is also given here. Again, the uh, factor is CR is a pipe roughness coefficient and one for the smooth, that means a plastic pipe, less than one for the rough pipes for the all metallic pipes. Now, these values are also available in our guideline. Very easily, you can see HDP and all that. The CR value is a period of 30 years while life is almost, you can take as, as 50 years very easily. Uh, you can also use darcy weiss equation, which is a standard equation of FLV square over 2GD, where the F is a friction coefficient. Now, nowadays, because all the new generation, we use computers, these can be design, uh, put it into formula in Excel, and very easily, quick calculations could be possible so the very standard formulas are available. Even a small program are available on, if you Google it, you will get it. These kind of head loss programs are available. Again, friction factors are also available for darcy weiss equation also uh, for, but in uh, again, important point is SDP PVC is the very, very low design period of, uh, so these tables are also available in guideline. You need to care, take care of the friction head loss in pipe in terms of a entrance loss, contraction loss, or outlet loss, enlargement, enlargement loss, head loss due to walls, head loss due to bands. But most of the times you can take these uh, estimation purpose, total minor loss can be taken as a total 10% of the total major loss. So you can avoid calculating these losses separately rather than you can take if it is a uh, 20 meter overall loss is coming, you can take 10% more, which will cover all these kind of wall losses uh, or pressure loss or head loss due to bands, T, valves, etc. Uh, if you want to calculate these kind of coefficients are also available in our table and in a headline uh, uh, guideline, very easily you can use these kind of coefficients for different type of walls. <clears throat> and then once you get the uh, total loss, 
you need to calculate total head loss in terms of a friction head loss. We have uh, suction static lift, then you have a discharge head, total static head need to be calculated. And uh, you have the elevation loss if you are getting elevation or any other losses, uh, T band, like total head loss plus static head, delivery head or velocity head. So, and what will be the outlet? Delivery head means what is the outlet? Remember, we started with discussion with this. In case of a sprinkler, it need to be 2.5 kg or 25 meters. Or in case of drip, it should be 10 meter. Or if it is a gravity, you can take it uh, 0.5 meter. So those numbers need to be collated together. You know the discharge of the in the pipeline. You know the total head loss. Then you can very easily calculate pump set system and uh, for pipe uh, distribution efforts. That is the uh, QH over 75 into the efficiency. Now efficiency, you can take it as a 75 percent nowadays. Pump set or uh, pump or motors are very, very efficient. You can take pump efficiency as 75%, 75% uh, motor efficiency, total efficiency is something like more than around to 50%. So very easily you can get the total uh, horsepower of the system, which you need to design in your pipeline distribution network. Now there is a, let's talk about little bit about the installation of pipe in a trench. Guidelines also talk about <clears throat> how you are going to do it because you need to, once it is a plastic pipe, you need to be very, very careful once you uh, dug it, put it some kind of a sand or muram uh, below it and uh, you need not to go for hard rock with the cement in case of, if it is a hard rock, otherwise uh, you can put a sand bedding here because that is very important. If you don't provide any bedding or sand, Sometimes in a plastic pipe, if you, uh, I have seen the condition, even if uh, and long pipelines, if any stone is there or sharp stone is there, because a little bit movement of pipe is there because of the plastic in nature, that may puncture the pipe in a long run. So you need to be careful providing the wedding and you need to follow up all these guidelines uh, once you uh, use it, different type of soil, different type of conditions, you need to provide necessary bedding to the uh, pipeline. Now let's uh, talk a little bit about the operation and maintenance. Then we need to be uh, checklist for pumps, check all the pre-season maintenance is complete before starting all the record levels and all the drains, valves need to be careful, open manual air release valves. Air release valves are very, very important because uh, once the pipeline is stopped or when it is started or closed, it is very, very important to check all air release valve if they are working properly. And before turning on the pumps, valve should be close to the point and it should not be more than one quarter open. After the pipeline is filled, slowly open the valve. That will put lesser pressure on a pipeline in terms of a water hammer and other issues. <clears throat> Whenever possible, new turnout before closing the old one. Always use closed valves uh, slowly to prevent water hammer. As I told you, inspect the pipeline inlet and those standard procedures are there. Because it's a uh, little bit uh, modern system, you need to be careful with the valves and all that. There are standard designs are available for uh, uh, towers for within the earthen dam control room, how to take out the water from uh, Ardhan Dam or uh, uh, what should be the structure need to be provided. What are the intake and desilting arrangement in a simply concrete block submerged intake. Intake and desilting as a section for a twin wall type of river intake. So different type of systems you may face and you need to use this kind of standard design which are you people are more uh, uh, competent enough than me and because you people are using it this kind of system very very long time <clears throat> like uh, intake from the reservoir or river or uh, typical twin wheel uh, river intake earthen dam sloping intake you need to be looking for some kind of automation and control we'll talk a little bit about the scada network and all those possibilities because it is possible in future, 
probably five year or 10 year down the line, we, these all systems will be automated. Automatic opening of the communication system is automatic and opening and closing of these valves will be automatic while you are sitting at your system and looking at your uh, system, how they are performing, if there is any leakage or all these things through the SCADA network. We need to be prepared, ready for these kind of system. I'm happy to share one example, which is also shared in a uh, uh, guideline. It's a uh, pipe distribution network uh, in case of Kanar project in Jharkhand. And it's a very, very, it is compared with a canal cross-section system. So you can see uh, what are the information of that, uh, what is the GCA and CCA, discharge required, cumulative discharge, uh, incremental length is there. And then we are differenting using different type of diameter of pipes. So you can see the 300 mm diameter and it is a telescopic design a sort of thing. And we are reducing the diameter because we are losing the water as we move forward. Total head loss is being calculated. Cumulative head loss is being calculated and net head available and all that design is there. And uh, if you look at the uh, economic point of view, cost of uh, earthwork and laying or jointing of total cost of underground pipeline is around 36 lakhs while canal system is uh, uh, 3.24 times costlier than the pipe because the uh, main cost is due to land acquisition and the, the cross drainage structures. So it is the cost of the pipe is important. While if we, we go for HDP pipes, uh, very easily you can save a lot of money and uh, efficiency also. We have done uh, not on a large scale, we are doing it uh, uh, Kopani underground pipeline network from the source to the farmers. We are doing it HDP pipeline and provided in some of the villages and all for the farmers. These kind of pipes are there. They have been jointed using butt welding. For a smaller pipe, this kind of welding is uh, by hand. If it is a bigger diameter, you need to use uh, the jacks and all that. So uh, there are standards available for that. And we found the advantage is a lot of water saving lot of uh, energy saving is there. We have also done an underground pipe, PVC pipeline network, Harket Kopani, in case of a Western UP. And uh, uh, in this, we are providing PVC pipeline network from the tube well irrigated area. And this kind of network and with the hydrants have been provided to the farmer. This kind of hydrant is provided to the farmer with air release valve and all, and uh, saving a lot of water and avoiding this kind of field channels so from that valve, he can directly take the water into the lapeta pipe or local pipe and then saves a lot of time and energy. Same way, uh, they can couple it with kind of a rain gun or a rain gun operating system or micro irrigation. We are also doing some kind of automation through the automatic check gate coupled with, uh, we developed a soil moisture linked uh, wireless control in a field channels this kind of automatic gate, which can be operated using a battery and uh, with the uh, uh, automatic system. And this is a, you can see the soil moisture sensor and it a better way you can see here. And we designed it and we are running it and we are testing it for coupled with the soil moisture sensors. Communication system, a lower cheap SCADA system sort of thing. And uh, we are using it automatic system that based on soil moisture, gates will open and gate will close once the soil moisture is over. So this kind of detailed uh, information is there in this. And I'm not spending much time on it and I would like to have, so this is the, and this type of system, as I told you yesterday, also automatic system is being displayed in drip irrigation system coupled with soil moisture sensors. I'm stopping here and uh, I'm uh, going to, uh, stop my sharing my presentation. And now I'm happy to, uh, we have still five minutes are there, so we can have some discussion. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the excellent and detailed presentation. Now I request to the participants for their questions, please.
<clears throat> if anybody is interested in asking any question or <clears throat> problems you are facing while developing a DPR, yeah, I'm happy to answer these kind of questions because that's a limitation with the uh, virtual system and uh, we are not directly meeting to each other and uh, issuing and uh, again, I'm not sure how much I am able to convey. I try to cover all the aspects of it and uh, one of the important point is all the people can download the guidelines of uh, pipe distribution network and use it for developing a DPR and uh, I think so then uh, it will be much easier for everybody and I'm happy uh, you can take my mobile number or email address from your organizers and uh, then uh, even if uh, in this training uh, if, uh, Further later down on the training, I'm happy to uh, communicate with each other. And uh, if uh, any question or query is there, I will be happy to answer. Hello. Yes, but I. Hello. Hi, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I have a question, sir. I want to ask you, sir. Sir, my I, question is, sir, where the road surface lies too close to the field surface to permit using? If the channel surface is higher than the road, then what kind of structure we have to apply, have to apply? In case of pipe distribution network, we need to go uh, below the road surface and uh, provide a cover uh, with respect to pipe. If it is a heavy load is going on on the uh, <clears throat> pipe. Then uh, you can bring it pipe to the again to the ground and uh, uh, provide the water to the uh, farmers. Okay, sir. Uh, hello. Anji, batayye sir. Sun raho. Ye apne MS pipeline or DI pipeline wagera pe ispe cover kitna hona chahiye soil ka. इसके मतलब पाइप लेंगे के टॉप कवर सॉफ्ट कवर इसके बॉटम पे या उसके ऊपर उसके ऊपर उसके ऊपर एटलीस्ट ढाई से तीन फीट ढाई से तीन फीट चाहिए कम से कम एक मीटर डीप आप रखेंगे पाइप को तो एक मीटर का कवर होना चाहिए तो अगर आप कह रहा पाइप आपका बड़ा वाला है डीआई है और जीआई है देन यू कैन यूज इट प्रॉब्ली 1.25 मीटर टोटल डेप्थ एंड अगर ढाई सौ एम एम का पाइप लाइन है तो आप एक मीटर कम से कम कवर होना चाहिए उस पर हम लोग वन पॉइंट टू मीटर ले रहे हैं हम लोग हाँ बिल्कुल सही ले रहे हैं हाँ बिल्कुल सही ले रहे हैं अच्छा जो उसमें जो बेडिंग का जो एम एस पाइप में है तो हार्ड राक वगैरह पे या जैसा आपने कांक्रीट बताया था तो वो उसमें जरूरी है क्या एम एस पाइप प्लास्टिक में तो जरूरी है लेकिन इसमें इतना जरूरी नहीं है क्योंकि वो इतना स्ट्रॉन्ग होता है कि वो हार्ड रॉक में इतना प्रॉब्लम नहीं करेगा जी 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 ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू एनी अदर क्वेश्चन हेलो हाँ जी बताइए सर मैक्सिमम कवर कितना ले सकते हैं अपन गाय का पाइप के ऊपर पाइप के ऊपर सर और बटन जी जी देखिए ज्यादा से ज्यादा ज्यादा कवर करने में फायदा नहीं है ना आपको डीप करेंगे तो आप कह रहे मेरे हिसाब से एक से सवा मीटर से ज्यादा मत लीजिए सर वन से वन पॉइंट टू फाइव मीटर कंडीशन बन जाती है हाँ कि डीप करना पड़ता है जी जी देन एक्चुअली क्या है ना अर्धन लोड इतना ज्यादा होता है अगर कोई हैवी अर्थ लोड चला गया तो पाइप डैमेज होने का रहता है तो थोड़ा सा क्योंकि अर्थ लोड भी तो बहुत है ना तो आपका धीरे धीरे वो पाइप को बेंड करने लगता है तो कोशिश करिए एक सवा मीटर से ज्यादा ना हो टू द मैक्सिमम 1.5 मीटर मेरा ये मानना है जी। <coughs> so, कितनी रखेंगे मिनिमम और मैक्सिमम देखिए अगर प्रेशराइज सिस्टम है तो दो से टू पॉइंट फाइव मीटर से ज्यादा मत रखिए टू पॉइंट फाइव इज दर लिमिट मेरे नॉलेज में और अगर आपकी ग्रेविटी लाइन है तो 0.7 मीटर पर सेकंड 
सर हम लोगों ने 2.3 लिया है वेलोसिटी हां ठीक है ठीक है 2 से 2.5 इज ओके इवन यू कैन गो अप टू 2.5 सो 2.3 लिया है बिल्कुल सही लिया है कोई ऐसा इशू नहीं है हां 23 मीटर हेड मतलब उसमें हमने करा है हां ठीक है ठीक है तो यहां पे कह रहे थे कि मतलब मिनिमम वाले 25 तो लेना ही पड़ेगा ऐसा जरूरी नहीं नहीं देखिए बेसिकली थ्योरेटिकली तो तीन मीटर तक ले सकते हैं हम लोग जो डिजाइन करते हैं वो 2.5 मीटर से ज्यादा नहीं लेते अगर आपने 2.3 लिया है तो ऐसा कोई ज्यादा फर्क नहीं आएगा जी 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 अच्छा ये जो एयर वाल की एग्जेक्ट पोजीशन किस जगह लेना चाहिए कि हिल के टॉप पे या खासकर वहां पर देखिए एयर रिलीज वाल जहां पे अंडुलेशन ज्यादा है कहीं पे पाइपलाइन ऊपर जा रही है या नीचे आ रही है तो ऐसा मेजर अंडुलेशन है वहां तो आप पक्का पहुंचाइए अदरवाइज आपका ये लंबी पाइपलाइन में अगर किलोमीटर वाली लाइफ पाइपलाइन है एवरी 200 मीटर पे आपको ये रिलीज वाल प्रोवाइड करना चाहिए जी 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 थैंक यू सर थैंक यू इफ देयर इज एनी एनी अदर क्वेश्चन इफ नॉट देन लेट मी थैंक एवरीबॉडी and thank the cbip for giving me this opportunity and uh, acha laga aap logon se baat karke unfortunately we are meeting virtually but uh, in a future we will be meeting physically also some other day training program koi karenge wahan pe aapke yahan aake tab zyada acche se discuss karenge thank you sir thank you for your time thank you for conducting this virtual session hello yes please yeah if there is any question i am happy to answer no problem सर एम एस फाइव में आई एस कोड टू पॉइंट वन मीटर पर सेकेंड मैक्सिमम वेलोसिटी परमिट करता है तो उससे ज्यादा जा सकते हैं जा सकते हैं टू पॉइंट थ्री तक कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगी तो ये सर कोई गाइडलाइन ये मतलब आई एस कोड में है या किसी मैनुअल में नहीं ये तो आपकी गाइडलाइंस में बड़ा क्लियरली दे रखा है आप सेंटर वाटर कमीशन की गाइडलाइंस है उसमें दे रखा है बड़ा क्लियरली थैंक यू Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you so you much go. for your Bye. time. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, may I invite our next resource speaker? On behalf of Mr. Sabarna Roy, Mr. Rajat Chaudhary is here to have the presentation. Our next presentation. Over to you, sir, for the presentation, please. Mr. Rajat Chaudhary. Yes. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Sabarna Roy uh, couldn't attend this session today. So, uh, so on behalf of him, I am presenting. Uh, my topic is uh, emerging challenges in pipe distribution network for irrigation purpose and ways and means to overcome them. So, at first, I will go through a technical presentation on pipe irrigation network planning. and then i will come to the next presentation emerging challenges in pipe distribution network for irrigation purpose so i am sharing my screen is the screen visible yes it is in this presentation i will cover uh, these topics why pipe irrigation system components of a pipe leap irrigation system an introduction to a ugpl system which is a gravity pipeline system and selection of pipe material so uh, my first topic is why pipe irrigation system why should we choose a pipe irrigation system and advantages of pipe irrigation system so we are Uh, all know about irrigation channels so there are various irrigation schemes in india were classified by the ashwal planning commission into three parts minor medium and major irrigation scheme major irrigation schemes are those schemes which have a culturable common area more than 10000 hectares similarly where the culturable common area is between 2000 hectare to 10000 hectare these projects are called medium irrigation schemes and where at the cca is less than 2000 hectares or up to 2000 hectares those seems are called by minor irrigation scheme cultural common area 
uh, is the basis for the design of water course and basis of the design of the irrigation project and it is the proportion of the gross common area which is culturable and cultivable and another one is we are uh, aware that is micro irrigation scheme scheme micro irrigation scheme is a modern method of irrigation and by this method water is irrigated through drippers sprinklers foggers and by other emitters on surface or subsurface of the land now similarly there are irrigation channels like main canal distributary minor sub minor water course field channel and farm channels details are here given below i am not going into the details now what are the advantages of pipe irrigation network over traditional canal irrigation system uh, there is a major problem uh, that is private lifting and is private lifting and pipe irrigation pipe distribution is a rampant in canal irrigation system now it is emerging as the dominant irrigation model in india in the coming few years we should expect a manifold expansion of this unruly system of irrigation rather than orderly gravity flow irrigation that irrigation planners and managers would like to see this apparent chaos may be better than having no irrigation at all but it is arguably possible to do much better by formalizing a pipe distribution and bringing it within the irrigation department's regulatory framework in view of uncertainty about government's policy regarding private pumps and also about the water availability in canals close to them farmers are unlikely to invest to maximize full irrigation potential farmers make private investments only where there is an assured water supply and therefore invest on main and branch canals and it is here where most private pumps are installed as a result under prevailing regime the area actually irrigated by pumps and pipes may well remain confined to a 0.5 to 1 km strip along the main and branch and distributary canals that offer water assurance so uh, here is an artist imaginary imagery of uh, the logic proposed uh, in the earlier side why can uh, we should choose pipe irrigation this figure shows the conventional system in which water was to flow into village service area through a sub minor taking up from a minor and taking water to the fields to network of field channels now state of command area soon after commissioning of the reservoir and the main system is given in this picture this picture shows the situation after some years of the project implementation when water began flowing in the main system but the command area remained dry for one and for one to distribution system below the minor now this chaotic development of the command area by illegal lifting of water along the main system you can see uh, the farmers which uh, whose lands are nearer to the minor or distributary they lift this water by pump system and they fed the water to their own feed so the red spills which are in the on the lower side of that minor or sub minor or canal this uh, fields doesn't get any water uh, so uh, the land become dry now this figure illustrates the situation after the ban lifting of water from the main system and ensure weekly rotation of water supply in miners which may be treated as storages and encourages farmers cooperatives and service providers to invest in a buried pipe distribution system to irrigate the village service area so this can only achieved by a buried pipeline system that is a pipeline system now if we look into the main advantages of pressurized pipe irrigation system over canal distribu distribution network which are as the as most of the pipe distribution system are underground right of way problems are significantly reduced allowing more direct and rational layouts to be chosen because outlet location is not limited by topography pipe systems are better able to accommodate existing patterns of land ownership 
with the minimum of disruption compared with canal distribution network. Pipe distribution network is also a better option for undulating topography. Because in canal system, you have to excavate more in that kind of topography. Cross drainage and cross masonry structures can be omitted or minimized. No damage due to heavy rainfall or flood during monsoon. Thus, pipe irrigation network is more suitable option for flood prone area. Now, uh, based on the data given in Central Water Commission guideline uh, of pipe distribution network, we have a calculated a, uh, the efficiency of canal based air conveyance system and a pipe based conveyance system. So uh, this efficiency calculation is based on water discharge available at different location in irrigation system. So if we look into the conveyance system, which is the ratio between water received at inlet to a block of fields and that release at a project head. Uh, and the same we have observed here, the other kind of efficiency like field canal efficiency, that is the ratio between water received at the field inlet and that received at the inlet of the block of fields. Field application efficiency ratio between water directly available to the crop and the received at the field inlet. Project efficiency, that is the multiplication of that conveyance efficiency, field canal efficiency and field application efficiency. This is water directly available to the crop and that release at the head works. And there is distribution efficiency, which uh, calculate the water received at the field inlet and release at the project end. So there are very kind of uh, combination of that canal system and pipe system. Like in canal based system, canal system can be with a drip system, it can with a sprinkler system and it can also with a surface irrigation system where the canal water is distributed in the field through water courses. And same kind of thing can be also observed in pipe based conveyance system where the pipeline main canal is replaced by a pipeline and after the field distribution system is run by drip irrigation, then field distribution can be run in sprinkler irrigation system or by water course that is surface irrigation system. So in each and every cases, the efficiency observed are tabulated here in this table. You can see the project efficiency is almost 20% higher than the canal irrigation in pipe irrigation system than canal irrigation system. Now, based on the efficiency, if we look actually the figure that how much water we are receiving at the crop end, the figures will look like this that water released at project has had been kept constant in all type of combination here that is we have considered 100 unit as based on the efficiencies we have calculated water received at inlet of a block of fields at the field inlet and directly available to crop you can see for a canal with drill irrigation system water directly available to crop is 57.1 unit where the water released at project is 100 unit and the, with same kind of water release, the APC, uh, the for a pipe with drip irrigation system, water directly available to the crop is 81.2 unit. So, like I said earlier, for a drip based irrigation system, you can say in pipe irrigation system, you will gain a 24.1% more efficiency. For a sprinkler based irrigation system, you can observe a 20.1% more efficiency. And for surface based irrigation system, you can observe efficiency of more than 16.1% than a traditional canal system. Now, uh, another point is least execution time for pipe irrigation system compared to canal distribution network system. Here I have given example of a Sarayu canal irrigation project Uttar Pradesh, which is a canal irrigation project and it the project is being implemented in phases one, two, three, and irrigation potential is almost 9.31 lakh hectare, reportedly created till the completion of phase one and two, and the project was included under uh, AIBP in 1996-97 and remained under AIBP till 2011 and 12. Till now, only 72% main canal, 10% branch canal, and 36% distributories and miners have been completed, 
and 1.48 liter lakh hectare irrigation potential have been created till date and latest revised approved cost of works of national land projects component is around 5803 crores and from that only 2737 crore has been spent till now 1250 hectare of land is yet to acquired by national land project component and court cases are pending for land acquisition till date and out of total cc of 11.29 lakh hectare only 2.26 lakh hectare is covered by common area development works and remaining 9.03 lakh hectare is to be taken up till now now uh, there is another project tista veres project which is in west bengal you can see in this project also you will see the delay for land acquisition and other uh, delaying the progress of canal distribution network work like the tista veres project was approved on 1975 for rupees 69.72 crore and for a cca of 3.04 lakh hectare and government of west bengal has submitted a revised cost of almost 3000 crore at 2000 year 2008 uh, and which was examined by cwc and finalized 3000 crore at two, june 2018 uh, 2008 price level and till date only 78% main canal and 51% distribution network have been progressed there is irrigation potential of almost 2000 hectare uh, uh, hectare out of which only uh, 3.04 uh, lakh hectare has been created as on today and till now uh, 1465.76 crore has been spent now if we look into the similar kind of project in leap irrigation system with pipe system you can see the faster execution like work underway on dholpur leap irrigation system in rajasthan the water resource department of rajasthan has undertaken dholpur leap irrigation cum dinking water scheme with the intake point from chambal river of rajasthan on epc basis in november 2017 gvpr engineer in joint venture with krishna corporation backed a contract of rupees 772.52 crore for execution of this project and operation and maintenance for a period of 8 years on epc basis and in december 2017 chief minister rajasthan Uh, had laid the foundation stone for this project and work on this project progress as per schedule the project is expected to be completed in december 2021 but it is already completed and now there is another project is mega lip irrigation project in odisha a total of 209 mega lip irrigation projects have been taken up under the parvati giri mega irrigation projects and as of now 92 projects have been completed and works for 82 projects are going on out of 92 projects 60 to 64 projects have been made functional providing a irrigation potential of almost 1 lakh hectares of land now there are other advantages of type irrigation network over canal irrigation network like losses in uh, losses in canal irrigation system evaporation loss absorption loss percolation loss transport transpiration loss and illegal lifting and susceptible to third party interference but uh, for pipe irrigation system yes uh, for some kind of pipeline there is a major problem that is a leakage losses but although there is some leakage losses this is way more uh, less than the total loss in a canal system so that is why suitable lined and coated metallic pipes should be used in pipe irrigation network in pipe irrigation system the required discharge is calculated by computing the exact crop water requirement which result in saving of water but uh, in canal irrigation system the losses resulting in considering a high discharge value at the head uh, here is an example of a champatpur branch under badaun irrigation system you can see when the canal irrigation system was proposed the head discharge was 812 qsec but when it is converted into a pipe irrigation system the head discharge has become 8311 qsec in canal irrigation system the cca was 14874 hectare and in pipe irrigation system the cca become 18000 hectare so saving of around 500 qsec in pipe irrigation for additional area to be irrigated has achieved with this type of pipe by adapting a pipe irrigation system 
there are other uh, advantages like short transit times of water from source to fields in canals the marshes and the ponds caused by excessive seepage in course of time become the colonies of mosquitoes which gives rise to vector borne disease and this can be minimized by adapting pipe irrigation network fertilizer and chemicals can also be mixed with water and cont uh, contaminate the same quantity of water supplied by pipe irrigation network is easily measurable hence water auditing can be accurately measured now we look into the component of pipe lift irrigation system uh pipeline uh, there is various types of pipe irrigation system so first i will go through the pipeline with pumping so here natural water resource uh, is lower than the command area to be irrigated and discharge is required to be lifted by electric pumping so first one is intake intake is a device or structure uh, placed in a surface water source to permit the withdrawal of water from the source then there is raw water intake pipe to take the raw water from intake structure with help of uh, a pumping station and from raw water intake pipe it goes to a desilting arrangements uh, these are uh, some components are uh, they are in some irrigation system all the sediment is co uh, sediment containing water is good for crops it may affect the distribution system by clogging so the necessity of a desilting basin needs to be studied in detail then comes the distribution main to take the water from desilting chamber up to a diggy or field for distribution and from distribution main it comes to diggy each chuck has its own diggy which receives water from its the distribution pipelines and the diggy water is di distributed in the field and then comes the field distribution network dividing the chucks in small hectare sub chuck and send the water up to the each subject so this were the basic components of a pipe irrigation system now we look individually in each component like intake so there are various types of intakes like wet intakes dry intakes submerged intakes and movable and floating intakes and irrigation intake is provided to allow water into a open channel or tunnel or closed conduit under controlled condition the intake design shall be as to give a minimum hydraulic losses provide smooth entry into water uh, conveyance system and prevent or minimize ice floating trash coarse sediment entering the tunnel or channel or pipe layout of the intake structure uh, main components of intake structure are listed below the trash rack and supporting structures anti vortex device bell mouth entrance with transition and rectangular to circular opening and gate slots enclosure with air vents this is the schematic diagram of a intake well and pumping station you can see from intake well with the help of pumping station water is uh, water is uh, intake and from pumping station water comes into the pipeline into the rising main pipeline here are various kinds of intake systems these pictures are taken from uh, cwc manual you can see this is valve tower situated with an earthen dam this intake system is simple concrete box submerged intake uh, this is a wet intake tower standing in the river or reservoir this is a dry intake tower standing in the river or reservoir now there are uh, as per is 11570 there are following factors to be considered for determining appropriate location of intake system like location where the best quality of water is available absence of currents that is threaten the safety of the intake structure formation of shoal and bar should be avoided navigation channel should be avoided as far as possible fetch of wind and other condition affecting the waves floods availability of power and its reliability accessibility distance from pumping station possibilities of damage by moving objects and hazards here is a picture of uh, canal intake to siphoning action in blab dal bheli media irrigation project in himachal pradesh 
Now comes G silting arrangement. Uh, although the sediment containing water is good for crops, it may affect the distribution system by clogging. And depending upon the sediment concentration in water, the necessity of desilting basin need to be studied in detail. The water which is directly diverted from the river system contains sediments. The sediments may block or reduce the capacity of distribution system. Thereby, it affects the efficiency of the whole system. However, the sediment water may be desirable for crops, but it may affect the whole system. Hence, it has to be removed to some extent considering its impact on the whole system. The source of supply of water helps in finding the requirement of desilting chamber as detailed below. If the water is drawn from a reservoir or lake, then the desilting arrangements may not be required as the reservoir or lake act as desilting basin itself. In addition, in case of canals, the silt ejector or silt extruder shall be provided at canal intake. Hence, the desilting chamber may not be required in pipe irrigation network in the water if the water is drawn from main canal. However, if the water is directly drawn from river, then the requirement of desilting chamber or settling basin should be assessed in detail. Now the tube settler. Uh, tube settlers, we are using now tube settlers as desilting measure. Tube settlers are conventional systems like settling basins are quite effective to reduce the sediment content in the whole system. Moreover, conventional system with tube settlers are having more efficiency in controlling the sedimentation rate. Settling efficiency of a basin is primarily dependent upon surface area and is independent of depth. Attempts have been made to use this concept to achieve better efficiency and economy in space as well as cost. Wide shallow strays inserted within conventional machines with a few to increase the surface area have not made with success. However, very small diameter tubes having a large weighted perimeter related to weighted area providing laminar flow conditions and low surface loading rate have shown good promise. Such tube settling device provide an excellent clarification with retention time of equal to or less than 10 minutes. You can see that in conventional systems where we use the uh, settling basins, uh, in case of large discharge, the area of settling basins becomes very much high. So we cannot accommodate that type of land in case of in place of a, a near an intake structure. So in that cases, we have to adapt the technology of tube settler, and this is more efficient, and this is uh, this is more efficient. Now, what is the principle of tube settler? Now, tube settlers are or inclined plate settlers are examples of high rate settlers. Here, what we are doing is we are providing excess surface so that the surface overflow rate will be decreased. We have sedimentation tank of some 3.5 meters. Rate. So if you provide many plates parallel in the settling zone, so what will happen is the effective surface area will be increased. And because of many surfaces are available for the settling or many planes are available for the settling, so effectively what will happen is it will considerably reduce the surface overflow rate or in other words it will be increasing the efficiency of the tank. So this is the principle behind the tube settlers. Here is an aerial view of tube settler type desilting arrangements provided in Balbhari Media Medication Project Himachal Pradesh. Now, Distribution. Now, for efficient distribution, it is required that water should reach end feed with required flow rate with needed pressure in piping system. There are three main types of distribution system that can be adopted in pipe irrigation system. One is gravity fed distribution. When the ground level of water source or storage is sufficiently raised compared to the irrigated area, such system can be utilized for distribution. 
the water is distrib water in the distribution pipeline flow due to gravity and no pumping is required such system is highly reliable and economical second one is pumping system in such system water is supplied by continuous pumping water is directly pumped into distribution main with constant pressure without intermediate storing such system works only in condition where there is continuous power supply reliable water source and where immediate storage system cannot be installed now next one is a combination of a gravity fed system and pumping system in such system broad gravity as well pumping system are used such system are used where there are variation in topography in the irrigation field now root selection of a pipe network so in distribution system it is very much essential to select a perfect route for the pipe irrigation network and what are the uh, things we have to keep in mind before selecting a route the length of pipelines in network is minimal as such as possible pumping is avoided if possible or least pumping is effort is needed high water pressure is avoided number of, of appurtenances like gate valve check valve drain air release valve pressure break valve are minimized very low or high velocities are avoided because low velocities called can cause sedimentation in pipes and high velocities cause can cause corrosion of the pipe so this results into most economical system if horizontal pipe section are used release of air and drain the dart will not be possible so in case of horizontal ground surface artificial slopes are given to pipes to be laid maximum and minimum velocity to so maximum velocity the higher the velocity the greater the risk of damage through the surges and water hemp this risk particularly applies to the pipe subject to uncontrolled starting and stopping using larger pipe result in a smaller water velocity for a given flow rate but smaller pipe is often preferred for cost reasons it is suggested to carry out water hammer analysis under such situation where higher velocities are provided when the water is in silt reach design velocity of pipe irrigation network should not be lower than non silting velocity and non silting velocity should be determined by experiments as per central water commission guideline the maximum velocity may be limited to 3 meter per second the minimum velocity our uh, designers must specify pipe diameters and flow rates that allow for a minimum operational water velocity especially for pipe irrigation system that utilize emitters with small apparatus such as drip and micro uh, sprinklers this will ensure that any sediment or solid are flushed through the lines and that's why minimum velocity should not be below 0.6 meter per second now here is a schematic diagram of a pipe irrigation system you can see the red ball is the intake system and from intake system there is the main pipeline is of taking and from main pipeline system there are distribution networks uh, which are covering the total irrigated area now diggi and sample what is a diggi now diggi is a small pond or shallow tank to store the water in a irrigation command areas the diggi is that used to store the surplus water at the turn of the farmer and used to irrigate the crops through sprinklers or drip system even when canal and distribution pipeline are not in operation this ensures timely irrigation as well as improves water use efficiency by the use of sprinklers and drips in canal areas to provide pressure irrigation in common area the land has to be divided into small chunks that is a small size of land and each and each chunk has its own diggi which receives water from the distributed pipelines and water in diggi is lifted to small pumps installed in the pump troughs constructed at each diggi location
here in this picture you can see from distribution pipeline what are the stores in a diggy and from the diggy with the help of small pump and a sample the water is lifted from the diggy and it is then the pipeline will distribute it this water in the uh, field level sump design and pump intake for field distribution standard design of sump mainly depends upon rated flow per pump to be handled for irrigation this will in turn govern the type and number of pumps required the following aspects shall be considered for a good sump design even flow distribution ideal flow condition each pump pay with respect to square and vortex formation and prevention of pre rotation independent pump operation use of screen in pumps base for arresting all trash and floating material and provision of gates to isolate pump pay for maintenance for satisfactory pump operation the flow into suction pipe intake has to be evenly distributed across the area and this can be achieved by proper design of sump components sharp corners abrupt turns and non symmetry should be avoided here is just picture where you can see from the sample with help of a small pump the pipe is uh, the water is taken for distribution in the field now the field distribution network now there is a flood irrigation system to irrigate the field distribution uh, uh, to air distribution in field flood irrigation is an ncn method of irrigation crops and, and it is still one of the most commonly used methods of irrigation used today very simply water is delivered to the field by pipe and simply flows over the ground through the crop although flood irrigation is an effective method of irrigation it is certainly not efficient compared with other options with flood irrigation it is generally assumed that only half of the water applied actually ends up in irrigation the crop irrigating the crop the other half is lost to evaporation runoff infiltration of uncultivated areas and transpiration through the leaves and weeds although flood irrigation will never be as efficient as other other types of irrigation there are several techniques that can be used to improve its efficiency like leveling the fields because water is transported using gravity it will not reach high spots in the field next one is surge flooding rather than releasing water all at once it is released in intervals allowing each release to infiltrate the soil before releasing the additional water recycling runoff water that runs off the end and sides of the irrigated area uh, irrigated area are is captured in low lying areas and pumped to the top of the field where it can be reused now features in designing drip and sprinkler irrigation system to ensure equitable distribution all outlets should have same residual head in low lying areas if hydraulic gradient is more it should be reduced by using lesser diameter of pipes or valves operation management system should be provided at each chock level small size of irrigation line that is uh, chock to ensure equitable distribution of water and pressure remote on and off control from the main control room is to be provided for sub chock the total irrigated command area is to be divided in from 20 hectare to 70 hectare chocks further these chocks can be divided into 1.25 hectare to 8 hectare sub chocks for uh, better distribution and a residual pressure of 20 meters should be maintained at the chock outlet to enable operation of micro irrigation auto filters may be incorporated in the design and hence the farmers need not go into the go in for the local infiltration if the design has one central pumping station and does not require local pumping station now uh, irrigation rotation at a 20 hectare chock 
divided into 1.25 vector subjects. So I have given a schematic example how a 20 hectare chalk can be divided into a small subjects and how in each subject the area can be irrigated. You can use uh, 16th number of subjects of 1.25 hectare each. This combination can vary. And here to distribute uh, 36 uh, uh, make flow, we have taken a daily irrigation drips hours of 1.5 hour and for a drip irrigation system and for a sprinkler irrigation system, uh, four day sprinkler hours is taken as six hours each day and for a flood irrigation system, a eight day system has been taken and it has been taken 12 hours uh, for the eight day. And you can see uh, with this type of systems an area can be divided into small chalk area and with a considering a particular rotating system, you can uh, irrigate the whole area. Here is a uh, layout of sprinkler irrigation system. This is a picture of a sprinkler irrigation system. And here is a picture of drip irrigation system. So uh, in this slide, uh, I have made a small comparison between a sprinkler irrigation system and drip irrigation system of a two hectare area. So in a typical two hectare area, in case of sprinkler irrigation system, you can observe there is a submit from the manual valve uh, or the manual valve is uh, from where from the sump or from the diggy the water is coming to the field for this part to irrigate this particular two hectare area. So at that source point, we have put in a manual valve and from that manual valve, a submin is uptaking which is connecting each sprinkler line. And in each sprinkler line, there is a sprinkler nozzle. There is a gap of 10 meter between each sprinkler nozzle and there is also a gap of 10 meter between each sprinkler line. Now, in case of a drip irrigation system, in same way from the manual valve, a submin is uptaking and it is connecting each drip line. So, in each drip line, there is a lateral spacing of 1.25 meter to 1.5 meter, but in sprinkler, this was 10 meter. But in uh, because from each sprinkler nozzle, it is covering a larger area uh, than that of drip system. Drip system from at each and at uh, nozzle point, it cover a small area. So for in drip system, that's why in each drip line, there is a 16 millimeter drip line with 40 to 60 centimeters spacing. So this is the basic uh, example and basic uh, difference between the how a sprinkler system operates and how a drip system operates. Now other important components uh, like power supply and this will I will cover in emerging uh, challenges. I will discuss in details in emerging challenges. Uh, now there is valves in pipeline. Now air valve. Air valves are provided to release the entrapped air from the system. The diameter of riser pipe should be minimum of 10% of the diameter of the bullet pipe and should extend a minimum of 60 centimeter above hydraulic gradient level. Provide all points of change in direction of flow provided at every 500 to 1000 meter, but for precaution you can uh, put an air valve uh, in each 150 to 200 meter. Like for field irrigation pipes, the spacing may be reduced to 150 meter based on the requirement. Sluice valves, sluice valves uh, are provided at different desirable location to control the flow in pipeline network and here in case of you can use these are basically line isolation valves. You can uh, give Swiss valves or butterfly valves to for this application. 
then there is scour valve scour valve shall be provided at lowest point near a nala to scour the uh, sedimentation if any kind of sedimentation is accumulated in the pipeline uh, so by flushing uh, you can flush it through scour valves and you can throw out the sedimentation out of the pipeline to keep the pipeline uh, clean that's why scour valves are provided at the lowest points and near any nala or drain etc now ugpl system underground pipeline system uh, this is basically a irrigation system pipe irrigation system same pipe irrigation system but with gravity system there no pipeline uh, uh, no power requirement is used in this type of system so i will go through which major points you have to keep in mind to design such type of systems so underground pipeline distributor networks is used to irrigate the command through a gravity network where the command is finally divided into small pieces such as 1 to 4 hectares and outlet is provided at the highest location of that piece called the subchop all such outlets are connected with required diameter of pipe so that the required discharge can be delivered to the subchop and that it is last farmer in the field which is ultimate objective of the pipe irrigation now underground pipeline is feasible option for steep slope sort of topography only the ugpl system is suitable for flood zone areas open channel is liable to be submerged or washed out in rainy seasons now ugpl with pumping is feasible for a ground slopes steeper than 1 is to 500 with availability of sufficient hydraulic drain now head loss is predominant factor in irrigation system so generally in flat topography ugpl system is only suitable with pumping only now difference between a lip irrigation and ugpl system now in a ugpl system water source is higher than the common area discharge passes through pipes by gravitational force which depends on the head difference between the natural water and source of common area. velocity in pipe is achieved by availing gravitational force if available gravitational force is less then diameter of pipe is more the design discharge to irrigate the common cost of ugpl network depends on the head difference and the distance between the common to be irrigated cost is less if the available head is more with respect to distance and cost is more if available head is less with respect to the distance no external force is required as the natural topography and the terrain features are used for flow in case of a lip irrigation uh, the natural water source is lower than the common area to be irrigated and that's why lip a uh, lifting has to be used uh, to lift the water from that low ground surface area and discharge is required to be lifted by electric pumping diameter of gravity pen main line from distribution tank and network depends on the artificial head created if head difference between the command and distribution tank is more then the diameter of pipeline is small and if the head difference between the command and distribution tank is low then the diameter of pipeline is more cost of gravity network in lift irrigation system depends on artificial head created if created head is more the cost of gravity network is low and if created head is low then the cost of gravity system is high but if created head is more then the cost of pumping system and cost of energy is also more and if the created head is low the pumping cost and energy cost is low therefore design of a lift head and design should be optimum so that long run cost of the lift irrigation project should be low so in a critical system we have to make a combination of lift irrigation system and gravity system history of development of ugpl system uh, in sardar sarovar nagar uh, narmada nigam limited in 2014 ugpl technology was adopted for common area development works where 350 mm diameter below pipes were required used to connect the sardar sarovar water plastic pipes were used rampantly at that time the gravity main and network of a lip irrigation scheme were also denoted as ugpl network now it is no longer done for following reason 
because in leap derivation the part of the gravity main and network operates or network operates on artificial head whereas classical ugpl operates on natural topography and terrain condition even in reiteration methodology the design is different restricting to server server nigam limited experience it was believed that only command area development on farm development works to be converted to classic ugpl concept in anandpur barrage project in odisha it is shown that uh, there is no uh, such thing it was based on understanding of topography of various indian irrigation sites and which is in turn based on study of gis and google maps now hydraulics of a uh, underground pipeline system you can see uh, the gravity system is chose where the source is on the higher side than the irrigated command area so the flow can be achieved by uh, the total flow can be achieved by totally without any kind of energy requirement and we have to take in in mind that in each and outlet point the available hydraulic grid line should be in upper position than the ground level so in each cases the available water level or available hydraulic grid line should be in upper side than the ground level otherwise the water will not flow out of that pipeline or that outlet Now, for surface irrigation method where great heads are not required the underground pipeline system is used which is essentially a low pressure system the available level difference of falling topographical features provided the operation head for the system that is the gravitational force stimulated the low pressure flows through the system pipe flow does not have free surface which is found in open channel flow being confined within the closed conduit does not exert direct atmospheric pressure but does exert hydraulic pressure on the conduit now uh, energy loss in a pipeline i am think it is all aware with you all that energy loss there is major loss which is basically 80 to 90% of the total loss and there are minor loss that is due to sudden expansion and sudden contraction bend in pipe pipe fitting or any obstruction in pipe we can use darcy wedge formula and cole brook white equation or nowadays we are using modified hazen williams formula to calculate the head loss in a pipeline ugpl systems in india Uh, here are the some example of ugpl system in india like cantinal irrigation project in odisha that is a minor irrigation project uh, covering a small cc of 525 hectare and cost per hectare is up to 20 hectare chuck is 1.82 lakh there is another tatco irrigation project in west bengal which is also designed with ugpl gravity system This is also a minor irrigation project covering a CC of 475 hectare, and here the cost per hectare up to 20 hectare chuck is 1.2 lakh per hectare. And there is Anandpur barrage barrage project Odisha that is a major irrigation project covering a CC of 60,000 hectare, where the cost per hectare up to 20 hectare chuck is 2.16 lakh per hectare. So uh, here is. the item wise cost is given in cantinal irrigation project odisha where the pipeline cost is 17 795 lakhs next the tatco irrigation system here i have shown also the drawing of tatco irrigation project the layout of the pipeline system in irrigation system you can see the pipeline layout has been taken into consideration the contour of that area to uh, up, uh, to maintain a gravity flow so the total pipeline cost in this project is 401 lakhs and there is another project uh, anandpur barrage project odisha where the total execution cost comes to rupees 15133.8 crore at 2019 price level the cost escalation at the 10% per year assuming its completion by the end of 2022 is found to be less is 2153.47 crore the operation and maintenance cost for it 5 years at 2500 per hectare 
per year is an account i cut of 60000 hectare comes to 23.36 crore adding all the above cost that is cost of execution at 2019 price level escalation cost operation maintenance cost total value of the execution cost of the distribution network and cad works is total comes around 1690.5 crore thus the cost of ugpl is rupees 872.7 crore cheaper than the open channel system that is about 34% less in the overall cost intake uh, here is the cantinal irrigation project when we visited the site the picture was taken this is uh, a UGPL intake here the intake structure was proposed intake structure there is a typical uh, schematic diagram of the intake structure a planning and designing of a irrigation system now, there are some planning criteria of irrigation uh, to design a UGPL system in gravity. Uh, we have to plan shocks of 40 to 60 hectare and a subjects of 5 to 8 hectare suitable to rotational water distribution schedule for UGPL. Location of turnout is kept on field boundary to minimize the length of the fence challenge. To prepare rotational water distribution schedule for shocks, alignment of UGPL system should be planned across the contour to avail sufficient head to overcome frictional losses in a pipe flow and alignment of UGPL system along with the contour line should be generally avoided. So we have to do it across the contour, not along the contour. And as far as possi possible, reverse gradient should not be provided to avoid tall structures, pressure pipes, leakages and higher maintenance in view of economy. Design criteria of UGPL system, the hydraulic gradient at any point is normally at least 0.3 meter above the reduced level of pipe. The hydraulic gradient should not run below the elevation of pipe at any point. The minimum velocity shall be 0.6 meter per second to avoid any kind of silting and choking in pipeline. The limitation velocity shall be 1.25 per meter to avoid extra head loss in pipeline. If the velocity increase, then the head loss also increase, then the difference between the uh, reduced level and the hydraulic gradient level reduces. So that will result in uh, low flow of water. So we have to keep the limiting velocity 1.2 meter per second in case of a gravity system. And the full supply level of the turnout should be kept at least 20 centimeter above the highest ground level of the subject. The working head is to be maintained at 15 cm. The air vent should be provided in between locations if the length of the pipeline exceeds 200 meter or where the trapping is possible. All possible measures should be taken to facil uh, facilitate the flushing of the system by providing appropriate low level outlets in the structures of the pipeline. To ensure free board, the height uh, uh, well shall be provided as under ground level plus 0.9 meter or FSL plus 0.6 meter whichever is higher. As the discharge for subminers will vary between 0.015 to 0.036 cubic, accordingly the diameter of pipe will also vary and all the structures are designed to protect against possible entry of flood waters and sedimentation in a UGPL system in flood zone. So, uh, calculation of design discharge head loss due to friction of pipe required FSL and available FSL of optic point of subminer stand out, top reduced level of well, reduced level of well shall be given by prepared by computing on a software developed in house. Sealed pocket, one meter sealed pocket in RCC well, that is the intake well in minor. And half meter seal pocket and the sub miner is to be provided. Strainer to check the floating materials at the collecting well, 6 millimeter diameter galvanized iron bar at 5 centimeter center to center internal pairs shall be provided at the entry of the discharge, that it is the head of the pipeline. Ladder for inspection and maintenance of the RCC intake well, bars with a certain spacing with MS angle frame shall be provided at. Uh, in and out of the well. Now uh, I will give a picture 
example uh, how we ugpl planning has been uh, taken into uh, has been designed for a canteen irrigation project so you can see this was the uh, site area where the underground pipeline system in gravity uh, we have to design and then we obtain the site map from the government and we have converted in in our autocad format you can see in upstream side uh, uh, in the upper side there is the blue line is the river and then from river in the downstream side the area to be has to be irrigated and you can see there is a, a sky hashed area uh, this is a uh, ongoing cement factory so we have to cut this area out of the total cca uh, when we are planning the design and the intake is and the uh, left uh, uh, left down corner the in this point this is the intake system and this is the downstream side of the pipeline so at first we have uh, imposed the uh, boundary of the actual chalk boundary in our uh, survey map so uh, this way we can uh, calculate each and every chalk area and we can calculate a average 20 around 20 hectare chalk uh, area uh, uh, we can divide it all the area in 20 hectare chalk and then we impose the uh, contour line of that system in the uh, in our format and this is the resulting uh, where in the map the all the valley data all the road and habitation all the contour line and all the area has already embedded in one drawing. Then we divided the whole drawing in 20 hectare sub chalk considering each and each every field boundary. You can see the green lines are the 20 hectare chalk boundary. Then at intake point, we have drawn a pipeline. You can see from the intake uh, point, we have considered a 240 meter. There is a contour line of 240 meter. And when you have considered the next outlet point, the uh, there is also a 239 meter contour. So there is a down in one meter contour. So uh, we are considering this pipeline layout across the contour, not alongside the contour, uh, to maintain a downward and gravity flow. Similarly, uh, like this way, uh, the total chalk. Uh, the layout of the total pipeline has been drawn throughout the chop. You can see there are sub main line. Uh, we have taken sub main line also. And from each outlet, each 20 hectare individual area is irrigated. Then uh, for each and every 20 hectare chop, we have divided it into a sub chop of one hectare. You can see here. The 20 hectare chalk is further divided in a sub chalk of one hectare, and there is we have drawn also a separate uh, pipeline layout. The red line is the pipeline which is covering this particular 20 hectare chalk, and from each 20 hectare chalk we have uh, designed a network of a pipeline network uh, distribution network uh, to cover uh, water up to one hectare chalk area. Here is the sample design sheet, uh, how we have designed. You can see uh, in the last green shaded sheet, the difference between FSL and ground level. It is above 0.3 meter. So each, each and every outlet point, the difference between the hydraulic gradient level uh, and the ground level has been kept, kept above 0.3 meter. If it is down 0.3 meter, then we have to adopt pumping like this way we have designed the whole system now operation and management features of a ugpl system the chalk size the system below the structure point is called distribution network. shall consist of underground pipeline to sub chalks of 40 to 60 hectare in size the chalk cell have underground pipeline water courses to sub sub chalks of area about 5 to 8 hectare in size individual farms shall sub to a system of unlined field channels structures to build in ugpl systems are collecting rcc wells swiss valve kundi turnout structure t valve air valve structure flash valve etc the distribution network design below 
the structure point that is distribution shall be free draining and operate on on and off basis all the canals of the distribution system when operated run at full supply level the system will deliver each chuck simultaneously through proportional flow dividing structure here is a uh, typical diagram of a swill valve cross section there is another section of that says swill valve chamber and other arrangements with the pipeline how the swill valve will operate here it is the real picture of a turnout structure in each and uh, every 1 hectare or 2 hectare small chuck level here is the uh, drawing of turnout structure now management there are some management features of a ugps system like water allocation like seasonal or annual water allocation shall be in terms of lps per hectare farmers owning wells shall be served in the same way similar to farmers who do not have wells available water shall be supplied to the planned area designated as culturable command area farmers shall be free to select crops crop area and method of irrigation in order to maximize the use of allocated water and other existing water resources the canal system shall not be operated to the sar uh, okay. so cannot be operated to serve the specific crops management all the pipes uh, of the distribution system shall be operated at a full discharge that is at fsl or otherwise shall remain empty irrigation water shall be supplied continuously for a day and night during the rotation period the structures on this pipelines are generally proportional flow dividers and no regulation adjustment or manual efforts are to be required no adjustable gates are provided but simply open and close valves are provided for subject turnout the maintenance of field channels beyond turnout is responsibility of farmers the manual control will be minor or distributory head in the system and the system below the minor head will be automatic discharge at minor end and tail should be observed and managed performance of water course there shall be no gates at the head of outlets rotation the number of rotation will be decided considering the available of water in the reservoir and the consultation with the farmers rotation period will be generally for 7 days that is 168 hours including night hours the on days can be changed depending upon the special needs and constraint of the system occasionally the time taken in filling up pipelines up to the last outlet in each branch of the pipeline network is decided and in advance and releases in each arm will be made accordingly which will be addition to 7 days period there is no provision for compensating the turn uh, of any individual farmer who have may have failed or received his turn for any reason time allocation the duration of rotation is allocated to each of the beneficiary in an outlet common in proportion to the cca each cultivator is entitled to receive water on specific day and for specific duration including night time as the irrigation is to be done throughout the day and night the turns can be however be staggered by 12 hours from year to year so that farmers getting water at night in one year will have their turn during in day time in next year for time allocation to each field seepage losses and filling time in the field channel are to be taken into consideration water distribution will proceed from head to tail in all pipelines including field pipelines so advantages of ugpl system there is land saving permanence ease of conveyance progress of design systems can be constructed quickly results in time saving water saving impact labor saving etc now the last section is selection of the pipe material so pipelines are the major instruments in irrigation project and as such constitute a major part of the assets pipe materials shall have to be carefully selected not only from the point of view of durability life and overall cost but their sustainability in performing the required function throughout the design life the following key factors are to be kept in mind while designing a pipeline system 
proper hydraulic design and selection of pipe based on modified resin helium coefficient availability of strength of pipe to resist internal pressure and external lead life and durability of the pipe material ease of transportation handling laying and jointing under different site condition ease of execution and minimum operation and maintenance cost the cost of pipe materials its durability and design lab are the two major governing factors of selection of pipe materials and the detailed techno economic analysis to be done including life cycle cost analysis before selecting a pipe material now economic size of a pipeline selection of a optimal pipe size and suitable material is an important endeavor in preparing detailed project report selection of pipe is done taking into account of lifespan life cycle analysis annual operation cost and other techno economic consideration where the pipe size is not limited or controlled by pressure variation or velocity requirement pipe size con corresponding to a frictional loss range of 1.4 to 1.5 meter per 1000 meter length of pipe will generally be economical while arriving at the most economical pipe size current cost of pipe pipeline hours of pumping pipe friction and energy cost have to be considered possible effects of water quality on pipe material and the deterioration of pipes which age has to be considered at the design stage by the designer pipe deterioration often results in increased friction loss and the designer should prefer for low friction value valves and fittings wherever appropriate the cost of pipe here we have uh, in the diagram we have shown the uh, uh, optimal diameter of the pipeline where a is the cost of pipeline and b is the cost of pump so if the cost of pipe increases with diameter but the cost of pump shows an inverse relation with the latter so if the diameter of the pipeline increases the cost of pipeline will increase but the cost of pump will decrease so the total cost obtained by adding both cost of pipe and pump will be high at extremes and optimum in the turning point when in the best pump and pipe size is arrived we have to calculate it by trial and error method now life cycle cost is a now governing issue in choosing a suitable pipe material water is supplied through pipes over centuries with various technologies invented over the period of time various types of pipe materials are developed and are in use of different parts of the world with so many years of practice the authorities have experienced the direct and indirect cost implication that are necessary to be considered while designing a pipe irrigation system it is very essential that we shall account the life cycle cost of the pipeline supply system while arriving at the most suitable and economical pipe diameters and proper selection of pipe material for authorities and engineer designing the pipeline system the life cycle cost analysis serves as a tool to study the various scenarios to determine the right solution for the specific condition and community values as well to provide the necessary data to support those condition the life cycle cost can be Com expressed uh, we have given the formula this is a combination of construction cost operation cost revenue loss due to leakage maintenance and repair cost pipe replacement cost for short lived pipe material and disposal cost here we have given a comparison between mild steel pipe ductile iron pipe and hd pipe these three pipes are widely used in irrigation system here we have given the comparison on issues like design concept bedding requirement backfilling materials and compaction required external corrosion protection system internal lining system properties of the material supplemental external protection system jointing handling of the pipe transportation of each and every kind of pipe leaks against flotation of each and every pipe design useful service life of this pipe material and limitation i am not going into the details i will share the presentation with you all and you can uh, read the comparison and decide uh, uh, where what pipeline is to be suitable for your project and here all the things i have mentioned it is based on indian standard cpho manual and niri handbook 
all the things I have mentioned here, we have given reference from which guides and which Indian standard I have taken that uh, that principle. So this is our suggested pipe matrix uh, below 300 millimeter or 280 millimeter. You can use HDP pipeline from 300 to 1200 millimeter. You can coated line and coated DI pipeline. And above 1200 millimeter, you should use lined and coated steel pipe. Uh, this will give you more uh, techno economical solution in a project. Uh, now I will just quickly cover uh, the emerging challenges in pipe distribution network. Here in this presentation, I have already covered the emerging challenges various. But I will uh, take out the emerging challenges part in another presentation. This is a short presentation. So here is the emerging challenges in pipe distribution network for irrigation purpose. Now we have tried to present some of the basic emerging challenges in lucid manner for which further discussion are required for improvements and modification in due course. One of the major achievements in this decade was planned adoption of switching over from canal distribution networks to pipe distribution network based irrigation projects. Pipe distribution network based irrigation projects re require power to drive water through closed conduits. As such, the irrigation uh, integration of solar power plants into large irrigation projects has been another innovation. Now, the emerging challenges in pipe distribution network based irrigation projects briefly are as follows sedimentation and choking of pipelines, land required for integrated solar power plants for large irrigation projects, power subsidies required in states where there are no power grids like Jharkhand, investments required in constructing sewerage treatment plants and sewerage system for using recycled water for irrigation purpose. Now, uh, provision of Central Water Commission manual on intake and desilting arrangement. I have already covered this part in my last presentation, so I am not going into the details. So to avoid the choking in pipeline, we have to take into consideration of desilting arrangement. And here the most modern system is tube circulates. So if there is a, a, a considerate amount of <coughs> sediment in your intake like river or canal, you have to adopt this type of tube circulars in your uh, irrigation system. Now choking of pipes by excess shield, minimum velocity shall be maintained for uh, flushing of pipes. During the first irrigation, cover valve should be laid open to scour out any foreign material deposited. And size of cell to be removed, seal particle of size greater than 150 microns shall be removed to prohibit, prevent clogging of nozzle of drip points in micro irrigation. Permissible velocity, I have already covered this in my last presentation. The minimum velocity should not be below 0 0.6 meter per second, and the maximum velocity is limited to 3 meter per second. There is another point filtration unit. It helps infiltration of water for micro irrigation to prevent clogging due to physical and biological impurities present in the water source. There are many types of filter like sand filter, Dix filter, etc. Type of filter should be selected keeping in view the water quality and type of sediment. Specification should confirm to relevant PI scores. There is a picture of typical filter in filtration unit. Now, uh, positive prospects for solar power irrigation system. Water management. Solar irrigation pumps could also cause unsustainable groundwater extraction. As farmers may seek to expand planted areas or switch to more water intensive crops. About 30% of aquifers in India for example, are already considered at critical status. While tailored drip irrigation can lead to water savings, assuming it will automatically do so at farm level is a fallacy. And the report says like so. 
irrigation policy decisions should be taken after proper water accounting over large territorial areas as rainfall surface water ground water soil moisture and evaporation process linked to different land uses are all part of the same hydrological cycle modern solar power system offer useful tools to improve water governance with electronic controller devices able to provide real time inputs regarding storage tank levels pump speed uh, and borehole water levels that could ultimately trigger the regulatory decision to preempt excessive reuse remotely india and egypt both experimenting with such an approach a viable alternative is to set water charges in relation to supply and demand calculations determined with satellite and thermal imagery a technique made easier even at level of individual feet by the fao water productivity open access portal one of fao's cardinal recommendation for greater use of solar power irrigation is to ensure that no water is withdrawn without an appropriate water management plan in place now land for integrated solar power plants for large irrigation projects solar power plants require consistently large chunks of land for successful installation one of the key challenges is to get ownership of such land from private owners when we started propagating the idea of switching over from canal irrigation to pipe based irrigation the owner utilities would question about how they would source the additional cost of power required in pressure pipe irrigation system because every state in india does not have subsidized rate of electricity for farmers we pondered on the problem consulted with relevant expert and came out with a solution of integrated pipe based irrigation project with solar power plants one has to understand that in case of a irrigation projects unlike water supply project water is not pumped and transported for 365 days rather it is pumped and transported for 4 to 6 months during the cropping season so you require power for 4 to 6 months only the solution is to integrate the solar power plants with state or national power grid from where power will be drawn from 4 to 6 months during the cropping season at a fixed tariff and for the balance month the irrigation projects coupled with the solar solar power plant will become a seller of electricity to the state or national power grid so if one considers the overall revenue spent and earned for the year for such irrigation projects the annual power costs become nil this model now being followed in an all progressive states like madhya pradesh rajasthan and this will become more popular in upcoming years so as to make irrigation integration of solar power plants with large irrigation projects it is critical that states legislate suitable policies so as to facilitate such projects for implementation and execution in the fastest possible manner now power subsidies required in states where there are no power grids like jharkhand there are states like jharkhand in which there is no state power grid so even if you have a solar power plant you cannot earn any extra revenue for that project because you cannot integrate that solar solar power plant with non existing grid this is a problem so which is yet to be solved the solution in this states can be imagined in following lines like power subsidy or incentive to be given for irrigation projects till such time the grid is implemented in the state or fastest implementation of the grid in the state now desilting of water and using treated effluent as recycled irrigation water perennial rivers are loaded with silt and cause choking in pipelines peni sular rivers are flooded during monsoons and cause bank erosion accumulating silt in the dams and reservoirs afforestation along with rivers banks can prevent soil erosion which in turn reduces siltation problem Harmful chemicals must be treated before discharging into water in order to prevent damages to pipes. Large area is to required for desilting operation. Suitable disposal sites should be selected for effluent treatment plant. Hazardous products after effluent treatment should be disposed of away in sanitary landfill. Effect of treated effluents on crops varies with species and source of pollutants. 
comprehensive study on effluent composition and nature of crop needs to be done before recycling or irrigation efforts should be made to prevent bio magnification desilting is a simple technique but consumes lot of time fresh water should be blended with effluents while applying in the fields constant monitoring in necessary drip irrigation can be effective means of supplying effluents for irrigation at required concentration public awareness uh, to remove misconception prevailing on the use of recycled effluents for agriculture is necessary future of water recycling in india treated effluents will be used a reliable supply of water for irrigation without compromising health and soil soil fertility proper silt removal and disposal mechanism will be developed and utilization of silt in agriculture will have to be reduced cost of fertilization no potable use of what waste water will increase non potable use of waste water will increase effluent treatment requires less energy than desalination and is more convenient sustainable and cost effective approach of effluent treatment will be developed public participation in desalination and effluent treatment process will be required the five pillars for water conservation like rainwater harvesting judicious is used by of water by individuals agriculture and industry use of technology for groundwater recharge sewage treatment and desalination reuse and recycling of water and afforestation must be strictly adhered by to people and governments state have to be part of the jan andolan movement launched by center government will finish aquifer mapping by march 2020 and in 256 water states districts since india is facing the most acute water crisis in this year protecting the irrigation structures by desalination and adoption of effluent recycling process in the need of the hour uh, feasibility of treated water from sewage treatment plants for use in irrigation with suitable conveyance system in patna city a case study the sewage generated in the patna city is proposed to be treated in six sewage treatment plants initially it is proposed to outfall this treated water in badsai nala and which ends in punpun river panel but to use this treated water for irrigation purposes existing status is there is existing sewage treatment plants in beu saidpur badi kankarbag and karmalicha that treatment efficiencies of the existing stps are not within the acceptable standards hence budco has produced to construct new sewer treatment plants with recent sbi technology to upgrade the outdated standards of treated water need of the project that treated water from all these six stps is about 370 mld this huge quantity of water is of quality and which can be used for agriculture government of bihar highly identified the potential to use this quality of water for irrigation proposed and to prepare dpr which enlist the details of land to be irrigated with various techni technically feasible alternatives investment required in constructing sewer treatment plants and sewer system for using recycled water uh, water for irrigation purpose so the conclusion of patna ke study we can say as follows that the union government has emphasized that the treated water effluent water from the sewage treatment plants constructed under national river conservation plan is a reuse in agriculture industry and other purposes wherever feasible as such the case study of use of treated water from sewage treatment six sewage treatment plants for irrigation purpose with suitable conveyance system falls into the framework of overall water conservation policy approach and philosophy of union government this type of projects is required to be conceptualized funded and implemented all over india as a part of overall mission of the ministry of jal shakti government of india for water conservation policy it is critical that we are in position to use more and more of desalted and non septic sewage for irrigation purposes so that the what other primary sources of water can be tapped for drinking water purposes of human and livestock there is also demand for water user association 
basic principle of water user association is the effort is to be concentrated promoting the water user association in order that the farmer are organized to work mutually at the farm level the basic principles are demands for working mutually through group establishment based on initiative of members by members and for members and consistent technical guidance from government and other related institutions operation principles of wua managing the water within the territory blocks average 50 to 100 hour hectare per unit operation and maintenance the territory or village irrigation system effectively and efficiently determining collecting and managing contribution in terms of money in kinds in kinds or in terms of labor demand for water resource association in availability of farmer to provide adequate fund for operation maintenance low collection rate of operation maintenance funds sustainability of irrigation schemes has been declining which in turn deferred maintenance special attention on encouraging participation to work together through the locally organized association and special attention for establishment impairment of water user association so the way forward is making better decision in operation maintenance of irrigation system manageable maintenance of irrigation structures increase irrigation efficiencies in terms of achievements of water saving like adopting a pipe irrigation system minimizing the possibility of system failure for water delivery by adopting a suitable pipe material achievement of timely and specially uh, specially precise the possible irrigation scheduling and achieving water saving and contribute positively to improvement of the agriculture productivity and food security thank you uh, that's all from my side thank you mr rajat choudhury for your yes. presentation on behalf of uh, mr shabarna roy now i request to the participants if they have any questions they may ask i will try to answer the questions as much as possible from my end and if i could not answer the questions you can always send the queries direct to mr shabarna roy Uh, the email id is available in with our presentation so uh, give me the questions i will also report to him and i will try to answer the question as much as possible mr ramesh mehra has raised His hand. Would you like to ask? Hello. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. सर मैं एमपी से बोल रहा हूँ इंदिरा सागर परियोजना हेलो जी कहिए सर हाँ तो जो पाइपलाइन रहती है उसमें कितने डिग्री डिप्लेक्शन के बाद थ्रेड ब्लॉक बनाया जाना जरूरी है रजत यू आर ऑन म्यूट मिस्टर रजत हाँ जी थ्रास ब्लॉक देखिए अगर आप एक डीआई पाइपलाइन सिस्टम की बात करें तो डीआई पाइपलाइन सिस्टम में एक स्टैंडर्ड देर आर स्टैंडर्ड बेंड्स लाइक 11 क्वार्टर बेंड 12.5 डिग्री बेंड 45 डिग्री बेंड एंड 90 डिग्री बेंड सो स्टैंडर्ड से स्टेट्स दैट वी हैव टू गिव थ्रस ब्लॉक्स एट क्रिटिकल बेंड सेक्शंस लाइक इफ देयर इज अ 90 डिग्री और 45 डिग्री बेंड एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन द वाटर प्रेशर इज हाई देन वी हैव टू प्रोवाइड थ्रस ब्लॉक्स बट for lower degree bends where one critical bend can be avoided by giving small small bend for a further pipeline like agar aapka ek point mein 20 degree ka bend ho par aap kafi sara pipeline left side and right side mein thoda 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 karke bend deke this bend can be avoided then you have don't have to provide thrust block in that location 
but if there is a sharp bend like 45 degree or 90 degree then you have to provide thrust blocks but the providing thrust blocks also depends on the pipe pressure like uh, if it is a rising main there is a constant pipe pressure like uh, above six, uh, 7 kg or 8 kg you always need to provide a thrust blocks in critical bend section but in distribution pipeline distribution pipeline uh, most of distribution pipelines operates under gravity flow so in gravity flow there is no pressure not much pressure so in that cases you don't have to provide thrust blocks uh, okay sir do we have any further question सर थ्रस्ट ब्लॉक का लेंथ जो है हां जी हां बोथ साइड सेम होना चाहिए या कम ज्यादा हो सकता है सर थ्रस्ट ब्लॉक तो सर आपको डिजाइन करके उसका डायमेंशन बनाना पड़ेगा देयर इज अ स्टैंडर्ड आई थिंक आईएस 5330 आई हैव टू चेक इट आई एम नॉट श्योर बट uh, वहां पे थ्रस ब्लॉक का गाइडलाइन है तो थ्रस ब्लॉक इज डिपेंड्स ऑन सोइल कंडीशन एंड टाइप ऑफ सोइल यू आर यूजिंग द हाइट ऑफ वाटर लेवल द प्रेशर ऑफ पाइप तो इस सब से मेजर uh, करके uh, आपको थ्रस ब्लॉक डिजाइन करना पड़ेगा जो कंक्रीट ब्लॉक का कितना डायमेंशन होगा उसमें आपको कितना रीइंफोर्समेंट देना पड़ेगा दिस इज अ सिविल स्ट्रक्चर एंड वी हैव टू डिजाइन इट इन दैट मैनर तो मतलब कोई स्टैंडर्ड लेंथ नहीं है कि इस डायमीटर के ऊपर इतना ही थ्रस्ट ब्लॉक होगा अच्छा नहीं लेंथ तो दोनों तरफ बराबर होना चाहिए या इनर साइड में कम रख सकते हैं आउटर साइड में ज्यादा हो सर बेसिकली थ्रस्ट ब्लॉक जैसे प्रोवाइड किया जाता है वहां पे पाइप को पूरा थ्रस्ट ब्लॉक के एज ए मिडिल पोजीशन में अलाइन किया जाता है मिडिल नहीं मतलब लोअर मिडिल पोजीशन में अलाइन किया जाता है मतलब अगर आप पाइपलाइन का ट्रेंच के हिसाब से देखेंगे तो पाइपलाइन ऐसे रहता है कि पाइपलाइन बीच में रहता है तो लेफ्ट साइड और राइट साइड में ट्रेंच के विथ के ये तो विथ तो हो गई सर विथ तो और अगर हाइट के हिसाब से देखेंगे तो पाइपलाइन लोअर हां लेंथ लेंथ तक सर और अगर हाइट के हिसाब से देखेंगे तो पाइपलाइन हां हाइट से लेंथ से डिजाइन में जितना अच्छा अच्छा Okay, हाँ सर आप जितना ऊपर थ्रस ब्लॉक के ऊपर हाइट रखेंगे उतना अच्छा होगा मतलब पाइपलाइन तो सर एकदम देखिए ग्राउंड लेवल पोजीशन में होगा मतलब अगर आप एक 1.2 मीटर का ट्रेंच एक्सकवेट किए हैं तो पाइपलाइन एकदम 1.2 मीटर और ट्रेंच का ग्राउंड लेवल पे होगा तो उस पॉइंट में जब आप पाइप ले करेंगे तो पाइप के नीचे थ्रस ब्लॉक का कॉम्पोनेंट कम होगा एंड ऊपर में कॉम्पोनेंट ज्यादा होगा तो जितना थ्रस ब्लॉक का ऊपर में हाइट जितना ज्यादा होगा उतना मिट्टी का सपोर्ट मिलेगा तो उतना थ्रस ब्लॉक स्ट्रांग भी होगा हेलो हेलो यस सर हेलो सर आई एम वी के वालादर फ्रॉम जबलपुर मध्य प्रदेश सर माय क्वेश्चन इज यस सर माय क्वेश्चन इज दैट सर what are the possible means of improving water distribution system in outlet command area with unconsolidated land holding having irregular boundaries uh, you can uh, provide matlab uh, aap uh, ek kaam kar sakte hain ki you can provide the outlet location at an uh, मतलब आपका कोई फील्ड आप ये कह रहे हैं कि आपका पास जो फील्ड एरिया है उसका कोई एक बाउंड्री आपको मतलब डिटरमेंट बाउंड्री नहीं है मतलब ओके यस सर यस सर तो yes. आप क्या कर सकते हैं यू कैन प्रोवाइड आउटलेट वहां पे कोई रोड साइड पे वहां पे कोई जो अलोंग साइड विलेज रोड जा रहा है तो विलेज रोड के कुछ पॉइंट में जिस पॉइंट में आपका साथ एक साथ बहुत सारा बाउंड्री कोलाइड हो रहा है एक साथ उस पॉइंट पे आप आउटलेट प्रोवाइड कर सकते हैं फॉर सच वन हेक्टर और टू हेक्टर एरिया एंड यू कैन एड्रेस द फार्मर्स कि वो अपना अपना खेत में वाटर कोर्स बना के उस आउटलेट से पानी लेके जाए यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई द ऐसे आइडेंटिफाइड एरिया कितना है टोटल ये आपको पहले आइडेंटिफाई करना पड़ेगा एंड यू कैन 
आप उसको अपने हिसाब से जैसे रोड जा रहा है विलेज रोड के हिसाब से उसको अलग अलग कर सकते हैं तो एक एक रोड के क्रॉस सेक्शन में एक एक आउटलेट दे सकते हैं और वहां से फार्मर को इंस्ट्रक्ट कर सकते हैं कि उस पॉइंट से उस एक हेक्टर लैंड में जितना भी फार्मर होगा चार या पांच फार्मर वो अपना अपना खेत में वाटर कोर्स करके लेके चले जाए ओके सर बट हाउ इज देंट्राइड ऑफ ए फील्ड डिटर माइंड सर हाउ इज देंट्राइड सेंट्राइड ऑफ ए फील्ड डिटर माइंड सर ये तो आपको ओरिजिनल फील मतलब फील्ड डाटा मंगाना पड़ेगा मतलब मतलब किस फार्मर के पास क्या फील्ड कौन सा फील्ड किस फार्मर के अंडर में है ये डाटा तो सर आपको लेना ही पड़ेगा और आपको तो पहले टोटल चौकआउट तो करना ही पड़ेगा कि टोटल बाउंड्री आपका कितना हो रहा है वो सर आप जियो लोकेशन से कर सकते हैं सर यूजिंग सॉफ्टवेयर लाइक क्यू और गूगल अर्थ आप एक एक फील्ड को अलग से आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं और एक टोटल फील्ड एरिया वहाँ से आप कैलकुलेट कर सकते हैं मतलब आपको गूगल मैप से पता चल जाएगा कि कि आप कौन सा एरिया को आ, आपका प्रॉब्लम आ रहा है कौन सा एरिया में तो पहले आप गूगल मैप में उस एरिया को आइडेंटिफाई कीजिए फिर क्यू जी आई सॉफ्टवेयर एंड गूगल अर्थ की मदद से आप वहाँ पर कितना फील्ड है उसका डाटा निकालिए फिर गवर्नमेंट आई थिंक लोकल बॉडीज है डाटा कि कौन सा फील्ड किस फार्मर के अंडर में है तो उस हिसाब से आपको टोटल एरिया आइडेंटिफाई करना पड़ेगा और उस वहाँ पे कोई रोड जा रहा है करके अंदाजा लगा के मिनिमम एक पॉइंट चूज करना पड़ेगा एक्यूरेटली तो सेंट्रोइड पॉइंट ना मैंने सेंट्रोइड पॉइंट चूज करना मुश्किल ही है ओके सर थैंक यू सर If the participants Hello? still have more questions, they may write to us. We will arrange the respective answer from the speaker. Answer fine. Now it's time to conclude this two-day virtual training session on integrated pipe irrigation network and micro irrigation. I would like to convey my special thanks to all the participants for their active participate participation and to all the speakers. Dr. T B S Rajput, Dr. K V Ramana Rao, Dr. Manoj Khanna, Mr. Dilip Yevelkar, and Mr. Rajat Chaudhary, who has presented on behalf of Mr. Sabarna Roy for their detailed presentation, and also agreeing to a request for conducting this two-day virtual session. I'm sure all the participants must have get benefited from the different uh, presentation and the knowledge shared during the program. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you all. Goodbye.